Well, our main talk today is absolutely no stranger to the Houston Oasis community. Jesse Hudgens has been a member of Oasis for about six years. In that time, he's served as the marketing chair and now the vice president of the board. He's a graduate of the University of Houston and works in the geophysics industry. <laughs> Uh, his interests include traveling with his partner, Scott, volunteering, photography, listening to music, and discussing big ideas in life. So please welcome to the screen, Jesse Hudgens. All right, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Please, please don't stand and applaud. Sit down. Really, it wouldn't be right to, to do that. Um, let's see. I'm going to uh, try to share my screen here. So we're, we're learning the Zoom technology together. Uh, I'm going to say share screen. I'm going to share this screen. And everybody give me a thumbs up if you can see in just a second my PowerPoint. Awesome. All right, so I uh, am excited to share this presentation with you. There's a funny thing about this presentation in that I actually gave it at Galveston Bay Oasis several weeks ago. Uh, and the talk at the time was general just productivity tips. But the as you'll see, the reason that this uh, is important to me is I've recently started working from home. Our lives have totally changed over the last few weeks. Uh, and so it, it occurred to me that this might be an interesting talk to give again for people that have started working from home. For those of you who um, are not working from home or just sort of self-isolated, there's still going to be a lot of great information in here uh, for you about general productivity. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and get started with uh, today's presentation. I, you know, I, I think the thing um, that has always been the case for me is that I love self-help kind of self-development books. I know shame on me, but it's like it's like junk. It's like junk novels for me. It's what I read. Um, and I've always read these things to, to, so much to the point that I actually have a book for some reason called How to Be Gay, which I didn't think I needed any help uh, doing that. But apparently there's actually a book that's available if you're interested. But um and so I've been reading these books my, my entire life, and I've always read all these tips about how to be more productive. But the funny thing about it is uh, I never really had to put much of it into practice. It was always just kind of fun. That changed last year. Uh, last January or February, I was approached uh, by my boss. We had a meeting, and all of a sudden I was told that our office would be shutting down. And obviously this was very concerning for me, but he um, and some follow-up conversations said I would be interested if you – keep working with me and we will just work uh, out of our houses. Well, that uh, was kind of scary to me in a way, right? Because to a certain degree, um, working out of our homes uh, can be, um, there's, a, there's a side of it in which I envision working out of our homes kind of looking like this, right? You know, it's, it's great. You can set your routine and have a very productive day. Unfortunately, I think for many of us, working out of our homes actually looks probably more like this. Uh, you know, there's so many distractions when you think about all of the, the stuff that, uh, that could potentially uh, get in the way. So I want to share with you today three productivity tips that have helped me the most over the last year to take advantage of uh, working from home and being more, um, being more productive. Uh, so the first one is this idea of ubiquitous capture. Um, and so I want to know, just raise your hand in your little box, how many of you have ever seen this guy or heard of this guy? Okay, so maybe nobody. This guy is named David Allen, and David Allen is sort of the king of the getting things done paradigm. Uh, so this is his system called getting things done. And as you can see, it's very complicated. Uh, there's lots of uh, different action items and, and sort of a flow chart of how things go, uh, you know, how to prioritize tasks. But after reading his book, the thing that really stood out for me was this thing right up here at the top. It was this thing called ubiquitous capture. And the idea behind it is that as you go throughout your day, there's all of these various things that come up. Uh, somebody will walk up to you. Uh, well, I guess that was pre-coronavirus. Somebody will shout at you across the street and say, hey, don't forget to do that thing. And you're going to say, OK, oh, my gosh, I got to do that. Or you're going to get an email from your boss that says, don't forget to do this task that, that I assigned you. And you say, OK, I got to do that. So for a lot of us, we keep a lot of that stuff up here in our heads, right? Well, that gets incredibly stressful. Um, so the idea behind ubiquitous capture is you need a place where as things come in throughout the day, you'll be able to uh, take those things and jot down a note real quick and then uh, deal with it later. And so I found an app that I think might be helpful to a lot of you. This app is called Brain Toss. And it's one of the first apps I'm going to suggest to you today. Um, 
the thing about this is, let's see. I'm actually going to bring it up here on my phone. This is what the app looks like, right? Now, watch what this does. I'm going to say, let's say somebody comes to me and says, okay, Jesse, I need you to prepare the presentation for Sunday. What I do is I say, I can either take a voice memo, take a picture, or I could take a little note here. And I'm just going to type in prepare presentation for Sunday. And then I'm going to choose jesse at houstonoasis.org because that's the email I want to go to. And that's it. That's all the app did. Wow. Woo. Super cool. You're all blown away, right? Okay. So what did it actually do? What it did was, and I'll bring up my browser here to show you. Let's see if I can find it. All it did was it sent an email to myself. Big whoop, right? Well, the key about that is I always check my email. It's the number one place I come back to. So this little app literally does one thing and it does it really well. You take a note and it sends an email to yourself. So all throughout the day, I'm taking notes and sending emails to myself. That's one way that I've sort of been able to stay on top of things uh, that have come up. And so that's the idea of ubiquitous capture. Now, I want to do, um, oh, so I'm getting a message from Abhishek that's saying, Jesse, tell people to do side by side or else they can't see you. So I don't know if there's an option on your end to do that. So there might be something that you can kind of click on that allows you to see side by side. But if you figure it out, great. If not, no worries. I'm going to jump um, in here real quick. I put it in the chat box, but it's also up at the very top. There's your viewing Jesse Hudgens screen view options. Click on that and you can drop down to side by side. Oh, cool. Awesome. Um, so I want to tell you about another app that I think is now specifically suited for this new reality that we're living in. And this is the idea of uh, social accountability. And the app that I use for this is called focusmate.com. So um, this is something that I started thinking about because I always wanted to try to develop a workout regimen. It was really important for me to make sure that I had um, you know, a daily exercise routine. But the problem is, even though I tried all the tricks, like setting a water bottle next to my bed and having my workout gloves ready, whenever the time would actually come to work out in the morning, I would end up just staying in my covers and not working out. <laughs> so the thing that kind of changed that was that I started going to some group exercise classes with my partner, Scott. And I realized that whenever I went to these group exercise classes, I was way more motivated to participate in the exercise. You know, the idea of being there uh, in a room with other people and having someone yell at me uh, to move faster or whatever was just very motivating, at least for me. Now, when I first started with these, I was terrible. But as the months went on, um, you know, I got better and better. And I found for the first time, I was sort of able to look back and realize like, wow, I have a, I actually have a routine now. Uh, and it was all because of the social accountability. So I'm reading an article one day and I don't really like the way that this article made this service sound. I don't like the idea of shame uh, being the motivator here. I think it's more positive than that. Um, but this this article came up that suggested that there was a that said that there was the service that allowed you to sort of virtually co-work with other people and uh, take advantage of accountability in that way to be more productive. And that is called focusmate.com. I want to show you how this works. I'll do like a live demo of it here. I don't I'm not actually going to connect to a person because that'd be kind of creepy for them to see everybody's faces on the other end. But this is focusmate.com. This is my dashboard, right? And so what happens is, um, let's say I wanna do some work on a particular day or I've got something I wanna get done. What I can do is I can come in and I can actually schedule a time, let's say 11.15 and book a session. And now what's gonna happen is it's, right now it's gonna say it's not booked, uh, but it will eventually match me up with somebody else that's looking to work at that exact same time. And then when the session actually starts, in fact, there's actually some people here you can already see on the calendar that are ready to work. Uh, so I could, you know, decide I want to join John's session. You know, so now John and I are scheduled for 11:45. What happens? We'll do a launch a test session here. And this may or may not work because I'm using my video for uh, Zoom right now, but we'll just sort of pretend. Down here at the bottom left would be a picture of me. Uh, and my webcam, and then the person. And at 11.45, John and I would connect. And here's how it goes, it's really simple. John says, hey Jesse, how are you doing? What are you working on today? I say, oh John, I'm trying to get this report done. How about you? And he says, oh, I'm trying to you know, finish this list of emails I have. And I say, great. 
we get started and then for 50 minutes, John and I work in silence right next to each other on webcam. It sounds crazy. I told some people about this at Oasis and they were like, I would never do that. That sounds creepy. I don't want people watching me while I work, but I promise you it's like magic. For some reason, I am now kind of depending on John to um, get his, you know, I'm wanting John to get his project done and I'm gonna check in with him at the end and he's gonna check in with me. 50 minutes passes, the buzzer rings. How did it go, John? Oh, it went great. How did it go for you? Oh, it went great. Awesome. See you next time. Uh, I saw somebody online that said it's sort of like back in school when you went to the library and worked with a partner to study, except unlike that time, you don't have the chatty library partner that's going to prevent you from studying. Instead, you both realize you're there to be serious and kind of work. Um, and so back to my setup here, here's an example of me uh, doing a focus mate with my friend Barack Obama. Um, just kidding. I, I just photoshopped that in. But I literally have this little webcam set up just like this. And as I work along and my focus mates come up, I'll at the top of every hour, I'll greet somebody new, work for the hour alongside them. And then when the hour is up, uh, you know, there's like a 10 minute break before the next hour. So it's actually optimized to kind of allow you to, to rest and then you can connect with somebody else. So that is focusmate.com. That's another thing that's really helped me. And then last in the in the realm of, of productivity are just uh, having some daily rituals in place. And so I'm going to bring back our friend, Mr. David Allen. Uh, here he is. So we, we talked about this get things done system. Uh, this system in particular never worked for me, um, but I like some of the concepts of it. And I like the overall general concept of having a daily routine, which is another thing that he really talks about a lot in the get things done system. And so for me, uh, you could do this in the morning or at the end of the day, I do a daily wrap up. And at the end of every day for about 30 minutes, uh, the main thing is I go through and I add any new to do's that I have for the day. Uh, I will um, go through my emails and answer any quick emails I have. If an email is going to be a longer project, I'll add it to my to do list. Um, and then I also set my focus mates or my calendar for the next day and just kind of review what's coming up. Uh, this has helped tremendously, just having this sort of ritual at the end of the day. And I would encourage you to think about how you could do that as well. Um, you know, get, being able to get up in the morning and not immediately have to wonder what I do, you know, have to do uh, today and just being able to kind of launch into my most important task has been extremely helpful. I should mention this workflowy thing here um, is what I use to do it. And I'll show you how, what that looks like. So that all it is is basically kind of like a set of tabs so you can you know continue to make infinite lists it's pretty inexpensive so i should mention the focus mate i think is like five bucks a month and this is similar it's like five or ten dollars a month um, but you can kind of pop things out i organize tasks by priority this kind of stuff um, so workflow is another possibility for something just to organize your your uh your day um, but the daily ritual has been extremely important in fact so much so that I actually uh, print out that, that list of steps that I go through at the end of each day and put it right under my monitor so that as I'm working, I can always go through in the same order. And so those are three tips that I hope help you out. Um, ubiquitous capture, being able to have that brain toss app and just send emails away, and forget about it for the rest of the day until you review your email. Social accountability with focusmate.com and then also uh, just having some sort of daily ritual that you do to kind of catch up on all the small stuff. Uh, but things have changed over the last few weeks since I first did this presentation. Now a lot of us are working from home. Uh, so this is an example of Scott and I's setup. He uh, actually has started working from home with me. And so we now have a dual facing uh, setup with him on one side and me on the other. And so we were talking this morning, what are some other things specific to working from home that have been really important? Um, and I just want to share these five things that we came up with. Um, we're going to go into breakout rooms here in just a second, and maybe you have some ideas too. Uh, number one, get dressed for success. So I found it's really important uh, for me to get up in the morning and actually get dressed like I'm going to work. There's something psychological about that. Um, you know, even to the point where I'll come in in the morning sometimes in my pajamas and maybe re read a, a newspaper or something, but when eight o'clock comes around and I get started for work, I actually go back to my room and get dressed in my normal workout, excuse me, my normal work stuff. Um, so get dressed for success. Number two, have a general routine. So just like at work, you know, I try to come up with a daily schedule of like where I should be at what time. 
uh, but also feel free to experiment with this. So something that has been helpful uh, for uh, me is realizing that I tend to do better in the morning. And so I've actually taken my work hours, uh, which were normally from nine to five, and sort of shifted them towards the morning um, because not only is it better for my rhythms, uh, but also my boss generally gets up extremely early in the morning at like 3 a.m. And so it's better for him as well. Uh, so think about kind of like, well, how, you know, coworker availability is still important. Uh, but, you know, within the realm of that, you might be able to move your hours around a little bit during this period of, of working from home if, if you are. Uh, the third is having a designated place in your house to work. Again, it's a psychological thing. If you're working from your couch or your bed, it's, it's harder to get into the mood. Uh, asking others in your house to respect your working hours. So, you know, your friends want to go on a walk, a social distancing walk or something, or, uh, you know, a roommate or something wants to, you know, uh, uh, to distract you or something. So just ask others, hey, you know, from the time of nine to five or whatever it is, I'm actually supposed to be at work and I'm, I'm going to respect that and want you to as well. And then the last part is when I started working from home, there was a side of it in which I thought, you know, man, I might be communicating a lot less with my coworkers. Well, in, in some ways, you really need to be communicating more. Uh, so think about ways in which you can have the daily phone calls or maybe a report at the end of the week that lets people uh, know sort of what you're working on and what tasks you have ahead. Uh, so that way everybody's on the same page because we aren't having those organic meetups anymore in the hallways or in the conference rooms. Um, so those are just a few tips specifically for working from home. Um, and the goal of course is making working from home a little bit less like this and a little bit more like this. So I hope that was helpful for everybody. Um, again, maybe there's something there that you were able to take whether you work from home or whether you don't.